So Apple released their iPhone 15 this September, which has the ability to record an Apple ProRes in log. And the resulting videos are actually really impressive looking for an iPhone. And I feel like the quality is really starting to bridge the gap between an iPhone and a real camera. But they didn't actually add it to the lower end models like the 14 Pro and the 15, even though those phones are 100% capable of ProRes log, as is the Apple way. But I have found a way to record uncompressed raw video on any relatively new Samsung device and it actually works on my Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. This phone is four years old, it came out in 2019, and that is by using a really cool app called Motion Cam. Now before I really dive into this, I wanna show you what a raw video is. And to show you what a raw video is, I'm gonna show you a little clip from one of my previous videos, which you can check out right here. So what I said in this video, I basically compared a raw video to a normal video that you would normally take on your phone. So a video on your phone would normally be taken from the sensor and then it would be processed and then saved to a lossy video format. But then raw video would be taken to the sensor and then it would be very minimally processed. And then it would be saved to a lossless format where the file can then be interpreted by the program you open it with. So to download it, open up the Google Play Store search up motion cam and there are actually two different versions of the apps the first version is the pro version and that's i think 18 dollars now and the second version is the free version which has less functionality but it still creates very good and very workable results now once you have the app installed you're going to open it up and switch to the raw video mode here you have all the manual controls of the camera such as the iso aperture and the shutter speed and you can also change the resolution of your video now for the best results i would recommend filming in the highest resolution and in 30 fps but do beware the file sizes are absolutely massive because you're literally recording raw video which is uncompressed and it can take up a lot of storage like each individual frame of a raw video using the highest resolution can be up to like 25 megabytes for each frame so we could easily take up gigabytes of storage if you're not careful now the free version of motion cam has the ability to save your video as a long sequence of individual dng images which you then have to import as png sequence and then merge the included or wave of file and then just merge that with your dng sequence. Now that because the video is in raw, you actually have a lot of flexibility in the editing when it comes to color grading. So let's go ahead and look at some videos taken with this. Now, the videos look all right, but there are some problems that I would like to point out. Now, the first problem is that the video can be really, really shaky. The optical stabilization in a Samsung phone is not really known for being the greatest stabilization. So you do have to be really, really, really careful to not shake your phone in order to get those cinematic shots. Another problem has to do with the sensor itself. Now, on that phone, you can set the ISO down to 50 ISO, but even at the lowest ISO, the resulting image still has a lot of noise in it. So you will have to sadly denoise the footage. Now filming outside in broad daylight at the lowest ISO is still too bright and required me to turn up my shutter speed to a thousand plus. So let's try and fix those problems. Now the solution to the first problem is just to use a gimbal. The solution to the second problem is to use an ND filter. Now you can just use some normal sunglasses and tape it to the back of the camera, or you could use an actual ND filter. And yes, I know it says UV filter, but it basically just does the same as what an ND filter does, which is block some of the light which is going into your camera sensor. There. And now I have the ND filter on the back. This is the least light sensitive that I can make it so that it will actually work well outside. So let's see the new footage. <laughs> So yeah, the new footage looks really good, but most of the time you will not have a gimbal or an ND filter, and the phone by itself can give some super, super good and very cinematic looking video clips, which looks much, much better than the video from the built-in camera app. Also, in these Samsung phones, there are some physical limitations that keep you from getting the absolute best video ever. The sensor inside of the phone is going to be a lot smaller 
than the sensor in, say, a normal DSLR camera. Another physical limitation is the lens inside of the phone. It is very, very hard to fit a decent camera lens in a phone that is this thick, so you do have to make some compromises, such as less blur in the background of your videos, and a weird vignetting artifact where the center of your video is noticeably brighter than the edges of your video. Now, speaking of the lens, a long time ago, I've actually seen Mr. Who's the Boss review something called the Beast Grip Phone Case. Wait, is it called the Beast Grip Phone Case? Yep. That's what it is. Which basically allows you to put a proper full frame lens on your phone. But the phone case is literally $300. And at that point, just get a decent Canon camera that supports Magic Lantern. And I've made a video on Magic Lantern up here. So yeah, I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope you discovered something. And I do have to say that the free version of Motion Cam is still a very powerful application. Even though it can really be a pain to get these raw video files into your video editor. Even more painful than using the MLV app. But yeah, I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. If you loved it, please subscribe. And I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Bye!